Hey everybody, it's Jenny Lee. Hallelujah to the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Most High God, Only Wise God, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the ending, who was, who is, who is to come, Jesus Christ, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, Let's lift up the name of the Lord our God and creator of all things, creator of heaven, creator of earth, creator of the universe. May the joy of the Lord remain our strength and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding be with us this night or day, wherever it is that you may be. I just pray the peace of God which surpasses understanding uh, abide in our hearts tonight and so uh, let us just continue steadfastly in the faith knowing that the love of God pursues all things the love of God is steadfast it's relentless he is fighting for us not against us he loves us so much Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the love of God and I'm here to proclaim the good news that he died for you, he died for me, to save all of mankind from the wrath of God. The opposite of the wrath of God is forgiveness found through the blood of Jesus Christ by pure love shed on the cross at Calvary. He poured out his blood for you. He poured out his blood for me. He poured out his blood for all to come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. It is time to arise. It is time to understand. It is time to rise up to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ given by the grace of God to be all that we are called to be, nothing more and nothing less, but it is by the pure love and grace of God Almighty that we can sit here, right here, right now, you and I, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is merciful. His mercy endures forever. Mercy rejoices against judgment. And why is that? It's because he loves us. He's not willing that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. And that's through the power of his love and redemption given by the cross at Calvary for all of mankind has been given a choice. Let us choose this day whom we shall serve, whether the gods of the other side of the river, the gods of our ancestors, but as for me and my household, my family, my seed, my generations to come, we shall serve the Lord God Almighty, the Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We shall serve the one true living God. He's the only wise God, the beginning and the ending, the author and finisher of our faith. He's not a God that he should lie. He will complete the good work that he has began in you. He will complete the good work that he started in me. He and only he alone can do it as we stand back and see the salvation of the Lord. As we stand back and see the delivering power of the Lord God Almighty, saving power the power of love the power of love of god is seen at the cross is felt in his presence is fullness of joy in his presence our pleasures forever more the kingdom of god is not meat and drink but righteousness joy and peace in the holy ghost and that all comes through the love of god through the love of God. And I appreciate you guys. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the fellowship. And I'm just so thankful today for what the Lord is doing, what the Lord has for us, 
has already done, is doing, will do. And um, so whoever is in opposition to the plans and purpose of God and call of God on our life, they're going to have to stand back and say, look what the Lord God has done. If we will just continue to pursue him, he's drawing us in. By his perfect love and perfect love casts out all fear in his presence there's nothing to fear we have nothing to be worried about there's nothing to have anxiety about in knowing that it's already been finished at the cross for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord their plans to prosper you their plans to give you a hope plans to give you a future and why is that because God loves you he loves you he loves me he is with us he is abiding the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost because we are children of the Most High and we are here to proclaim the good news we are here to preach the gospel of good news to the poor to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord to watch the captives get set free as the prison doors are open opening even as we speak by the word of faith faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God and so I just pray that deaf ears spiritually deaf ears be open tonight that spiritually blind eyes would be open tonight that any deaf or dumb spirit in the minds any deceptive spirit any strong delusion in the mind, any antichrist spirit in operation in the minds of the people participating and watching this video be identified, exposed, and to put to complete shame. We cast you out in the name of Christ Almighty, never to return again. For the truth shall speak for itself, for the scripture shall interpret its own self. Jesus is the word made flesh who lived and dwelt he lived and dwelt among us he's the word made flesh the person of Jesus Christ is the image of the fullness of what love really is and the truth is found in him without him there is no truth you cannot separate Jesus the Christ the Messiah the anointed one from the word because Jesus is the word made flesh and he gave himself as a sacrifice for all of mankind to turn from our wicked ways and repent for from godly sorrow the goodness of God leads us to repentance and that's by the love of God he draws us closer and closer as we walk with him as we abide in him as we trust in him as we remain in his presence as we abide in the vine his glory is made manifest it comes from the grace of God which has enabled the love of God to even be made manifest in our lives for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life in accordance with the book of John 316 why did he give his son because he loves the world so much so that we would believe in his son Jesus Christ so that we would not perish so that we will have everlasting life no man comes to the father but by him according to Romans 5 8 but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners Christ died for us while we were still sinners while we were still sinners Christ died for us he died for you he died for me if nobody on earth 
even existed besides you. He died for you alone. He will leave the 99 for the one. All of heaven rejoices over one sinner who repents and turns to the Lord Jesus Christ. His love is being poured out upon us. His love is strengthening us. His love is our guiding force. His love draws us near. It's by the grace of God through the love of Christ that's shed in our hearts that takes that stony heart out and he puts in a heart of flesh as we are born again as new creations in Jesus Christ. It's by love that we are even able to be reborn and made new and begin to love ourselves, receive forgiveness from God, forgive ourselves. To him who loves much has been forgiven much. But do we forgive ourselves? His blood wasn't just for us to proclaim about the forgiveness, that's a part of it, but do we forgive ourselves by receiving the forgiveness given by God through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? According to Romans 8.35-39, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor anger, angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Where does the love of God come from at the end? It comes from Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? Our Lord, our Savior. And we are freed from the bondage of insecurity. We are freed from the bondage of unforgiveness. We are freed from the bondage of deception. We are freed from the bondage of strong delusion that's coming in these last days by the truth which is shed upon us by the love of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, cleansing us of all sin knowing that the veil has been torn, that we come boldly to the throne room of grace in our time of need, that there is one mediator between man and God, and that is Jesus Christ, who was and will always be the complete embodiment of love, according to 1 John 4.16. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So on the vice versa, whoever is not abiding in love, God does not abide in him. And there's a lot of hatred going on in this world around us. There's a lot of division going on in this world around us. There's a lot of murder and anger and rage going on in this world around us. But love conquers all. Love conquers all. And until Christ is all we truly have, then we will come to the full understanding that Christ is all we truly need. Because love conquers all. We are more than overcomers with the knowledge of God. According to Isaiah 41, 10, Fear not, for I am with you, 
Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. When we feel like we just can't do this anymore. When we feel the in-between stages. And yes, there is an in-between stage. We're either believers or we're not. Don't get me wrong, I'm not going there, where this may seem like I'm going. We're either sheeps or we're goats. But there is an in-between stage, in between the videos, in between the preaching, in between the speaking, in between the worshiping, in between what everybody on the outside sees. When we're feeling alone, when we're feeling heavy, when we're feeling some spirits trying to attach themselves to us, it's in that moment that we must speak forth the word of God as an offensive weapon against the enemy so that he will not be allowed through any open door to cover us in a demonic covering that's in opposition with the love of God. Because it's in those moments, the in-betweens, the enemy speaks and he plants seeds and he's the father of lies. And he has been lying to humanity since the beginning in the garden. Did God really say not to eat of that tree. Did God really say? And he still comes at us with that same old tactic. And that's why it's so easily identifiable. <laughs> Did God really say to fear not because he's with us? Did God really say not to be dismayed because he is our God? Did God really say he will strengthen us? He will help us? Did God really say he will uphold us with his righteous right hand? Yes. Sons and daughters, brethren of the Most High, God really said it. And if God said it, then that settles it. Let God be true and every man a liar in a sense that his word is the only truth that was and ever will be. <laughs> so let God be true and every man a liar and whatever is meant to happen will happen in the Lord's timing as we stand back and see the salvation delivering power, freeing power, of the Lord God Almighty. He has broken the chains of darkness. He has loosed us from the bonds of death. And so we shall speak forth the good news. The good news. Hallelujah. According to Ephesians 3.17 through 19, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. It surpasses all understanding that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So to be filled with all of the fullness of God, there's a key of Christ dwelling in our hearts through faith. And Christ is Jesus, who is the God of love. Being rooted and grounded in love leads to us being filled with all the fullness of God. If you read it here, line upon line, precept upon precept, it ties together from beginning to the ending 
of these verses right here, that Christ dwells in our hearts through faith. How can Christ dwell in our hearts? Through faith. Faith in what? Faith in what he did for us. He died for us to be saved. And that allows us to be rooted and grounded in love. Because we may have strength to comprehend with all of the saints the breadth, the length, the height, the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with some of the fullness of God, or that you may be filled with a portion of the fullness of God, or that you may be filled with a piece of the fullness of God. No, that you may be filled with all of the fullness of God. I don't know about you, but I want all of the fullness of God. I don't want halfway. I don't want a quarter of the way, but I want all of the fullness of God, which ties back to being rooted and grounded in the love of God. And that comes through God's amazing grace. It's unearned. It is unmerited. You can't earn it. You can't work for it. It's complete favor that God chose to send his son to die for all of mankind to be saved. That is pure love in action. According to 1 John, 410. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. According to John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. According to Psalm 11, 8, 6, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? What can man do to us? Fear not the one that can kill just the body, but that after having done so can cast the soul to hell. But we have forgiveness and ability to go to heaven through belief in the one and only Son of God, Jesus Christ. Is that what you believe today? Is that what you believe tonight? Because the world is pushing an antichrist agenda. And in that agenda is wrapped up in a pretty little great looking box. Deception. Lies strong delusion and so we need discernment we need wisdom we need understanding we need the strength we need real relationship we need the presence of god we need intimacy we need to hear his voice his sheep hear his voice and follow his voice and they will not follow another do we believe Jesus is the Christ, the one and only Son of God, the one and only way to heaven? There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's in Christ Jesus we move. It's in Christ Jesus we breathe. It's in Christ Jesus we have our being of who we are. It's knowing who we are in Christ comes from being rooted and grounded in love. And so that's a fruit of the Spirit to look for in the people around us who are trying to come into our inner circle. Many people will look and see what the Lord is doing. And we are not to just let any person into our inner circle 
our tight knit circle of family of God, friends. We need discernment in this hour. According to Jeremiah 31, 3, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. He loves us with an everlasting love. It's hard to comprehend because on earth, it's just, <laughs> we are human beings, so it's hard at times to comprehend the eternal things of God because of the simplicity that we are humans. But we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, meaning that our minds have a hard time receiving what God says about his love for us. But our spirit will bear witness to the word and what the word of God says about us. And then there's a divine shift when our spirit bears witness with the word of God and our mind will begin to be pushed into agreement supernaturally. And that supernatural force is through the grace of God. It's the love, everlasting love. He has continued his faithfulness to us. Even when we are faithless, he remains faithful. He is faithful to complete this good work he has started in each and every one of us. And we have to just continue. There will be times where we don't feel like it. There will be times where we feel like giving up. There may be times that we feel like throwing in the towel. There may be times where we don't feel enjoyment in some of the things that he's telling us to do. But it's all for our good. And we don't have to understand in that very present moment. But all we have to really understand is that his ways are higher than our ways. And past finding out, he is mysterious. According to Psalm 147.3, he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up the wounds. According to Psalm 103.8, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. That's a pretty powerful living word right there that He's slow to anger, he is merciful, he is gracious, and abounding in steadfast love. When you think about the word steadfast, what do you think? I think of it as a verb, something in movement, something that's powerful. Steadfast love, everlasting love leading us to everlasting life. Who wouldn't want to partake in the good news message? According to 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. We can only love because he first loved us. So when we receive the forgiveness given by God through Jesus Christ's sacrifice by the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross, we can begin to forgive ourselves. And then that comes through God's forgiveness. And then afterwards, we can begin to love ourselves. And then afterwards, we can begin to understand mercy and we can begin to show it to others. We can begin to be merciful to others, gracious to others, forgiving 70 times 7 in one day towards others. We can begin to release 
unforgiveness from our hearts and be healed by the supernatural steadfast love of the Father. Reckless love of God chasing after each and every one of us every moment of every day every moment of every night that reckless love of God is chasing after you it's chasing after me why <laughs> why would we choose to forsake such a beautiful thing such a sweet thing such a wonderful presence in the love of God, in His presence. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord is merciful. So even when we're going through it, even when we're feeling a struggle, that's part of it. <laughs> it strengthens us. It molds character in us. The pressure cooker births glory. <laughs> His love is steadfast. Even when we're going through things, we cannot forget God loves us. It doesn't matter what's going on on the outside or how things appear. Because things aren't always going to appear in the way that we think they should appear. That doesn't change the love of God for us. So we must have our identity be known straight from the scripture of the word of God as we are rooted and grounded in the love of God. That's how our identity even comes forth. And without the understanding of the love of God, which comes by God's amazing grace, we would not be able to stand firm. We are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And what Jesus did for us comes from pure love. So we must continue. We must continue. A lot of us are in the pressure cooker. A lot of us are in the fire. A lot of us go to church on Sunday and smile and clap and give everybody a high five and a handshake and a hug and then go home and live miserable for the rest of the week. But is that really God's will? A lot of us put on a church mask, a church face, pretend to be something other than what we really are but the fact of the matter in accordance with God's word is that we have all fallen short of the mark of the high calling in Christ we must press forward towards that mark but we have fallen short and that's why we need the love of God that's why we need the one mediator between man and God that's why we can run to the advocate who is Jesus Christ mighty intercess intercessor interceding on our behalf and so he's good He's awesome. And I don't know why we would ever consider turning back like a dog returning to its vomit. Why would we want to go back to the things of the world? Why would we want to go back to our old ways? Yes, we get caught up. Sometimes. Yes. The enemy has plots. The enemy has snares. The enemy will attempt to entangle our soul in things of the past because that's his job and he does a good job at his job but God does a greater job at his job which is creator of all things he is much greater in strength and let us not allow Satan to have an advantage over us and in order to win this thing, I truly believe as more than conquerors to have an understanding that love conquers all is the only way. Love is patient. Love is kind. Long-suffering. Hallelujah. 
God wants us to love each other. And there's a lot of division. There's a lot of strife. There's a lot of hatred. There's a lot of tension, even in and out of the body of Christ, just in the world and in the body of Christ as well. And if we could unify under the covering of grace in the love of God, what amazing things we would begin to see, which are already happening, but it shall continue to an even greater capacity as we move along in the time frame of this whole unraveling of the end times. We must abide in the love of God and be under his covering of grace and love to seek him as shelter. He is our refuge our mighty fortress, our strong tower, our high tower, a place we run to in times of trouble. But even when we're not in trouble, we can abide in him. And we are to abide in him in a deeper intimacy each day than the day before. Let us look a little more like Jesus each day, even though we will never completely measure up because the only perfect one is God. We can serve him because he's put his love in us. And that love gives us the ability to love others and to overlook some of the things that others have done to us and to let it go and to stop holding on to soul wounds that will cause us to become ill, that will cause us to become sick, that may be an open door for the spirit of infirmity to come in. But we release these soul wounds, we release unforgiveness, we release strife and bitterness and envying from our hearts because the love of God calls us to do so by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised and he alone is worthy praise be to God the father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has begotten us he's given us many gifts and if we just come together and use them without all of these other distractions getting in the way we can be part of this end time harvest of souls, this revival that isn't just to come, but has already began and is happening. And we're either part of it or we're not. We're either in or we're out. We're either sheeps or we're goats. We either believe or we don't. There's no middle ground there. We must choose this day who we shall serve. And if it's not Jesus, it's not God. And if it's not God, I gotta tell you the truth, it's Satan. If it's not God, we should want no part in it. If it's not anointed, we should want no part in it. If it's not Holy Spirit birth, we should want no part in it. And that's just it. How did things get birthed by the Holy Spirit? Love of God opens up our eyes to see things for what it really is, to see people for who they really are, and look beyond the shortcomings of humanity around us and extend a helping hand to people struggling in times of great need, in times of persecution. For all who live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. I'm not speaking this to be considered any type of fear mongerer. But the preparation of the mindset of the love of God and the unification of the body of Christ must begin sometime. And I believe it must begin here and I believe it must begin now. And there you have it. 
So if you don't know the Lord and you feel like the Lord is pulling you, drawing you closer to himself, that he wants a personal relationship with you. And even if you do know him and feel led, even if you do know the Lord and feel led to get closer to him, he will draw us in. No man comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. And if Jesus Christ be lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. And a lot of the times we are pushing, we are pushing our agenda at times. We are pushing other people further from God in an attempt to get them closer to God because we're not doing it by the grace of God and watching God do it, but we're trying to do it in our own strength. But when we stand back, we pray for those people that we love and care about so deeply, and we stand back, we shall just see the salvation delivering power of the Lord come to pass. We will see. He is faithful. He is faithful who promised. He is not a God that he should lie. And he will do it. He will do it. We can put our all in him. We can put all of our faith. We can put all of our hope. We can put all of our trust in Jesus. Because he is faithful. And his word shall never come back void. It will never come back void. His word is truth and it's the only truth that there is was and will ever be and that's in Jesus all who are of the truth hear his voice and he speaks through his holy prophets he speaks through his servants. And so when we are watching videos, when we are watching sermons, when we are watching teachings, it's important to have discernment for the love of God to glisten from that person that we are receiving understanding from. Because in this hour, there's a lot of deception. So we are to inspect we are to look at the fruits of the spirit in other people's lives not to judge in such a way as a point of finger where people are falling short because we've all fallen short we have all fallen short that's why we need the love of God that's why we need the grace of God that's why we need the forgiveness of God that's why we need the delivering power of salvation working actively and effectively in our lives but we are to judge with righteous judgment and everyone born of God loves Love is the fulfillment of the law. And when we have perfect love of God filling us up each and every day, we will not live in anxiety. We will not live in fear. We will not live in worry any longer. We will not live in these things. It is not appointed it is not appointed and a lot of us have taken on things that have never been appointed to us but we have chosen to attempt to carry the heavy load on our own shoulders when Jesus already bore it at the cross over 2,000 years ago his yoke is easy and his burden is light let us not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's a heavy yoke. But Jesus said that his yoke is easy and his burden is light because he loves us. He doesn't want us to take on backpack loads of bricks on our shoulders from things of the past but it's been washed away by the perfect love of God which came in the form of Jesus Christ God's only son his love has ran red streaming through us 
we are born again believers sons and daughters a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people with that we are to show forth the praises of He who has called us out of darkness into His marvelous light. Why wouldn't we want to proclaim the good news to every living creature? Why wouldn't we want to go and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, making disciples. Why wouldn't we want to tell other people of the good news that Jesus Christ came to save sinners by His amazing grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, by perfect love this is the key to it all this is the key to it all it glues it all together it glues it all together it holds everything together it holds the body of Christ fitly joined together and so we can operate and flow in the way that God desires us to when we prefer one over ourselves when we prefer one another and esteem one another more highly than our own self and that's it the key to the puzzle is God's grace his unmerited undeserved favor and by that he has given us love through Jesus and so we must accept Jesus as Lord over our lives, as Savior over our entire lives, and that that's the only way. There's a broad way, and a lot of people are going down that broad pathway, and the broad way leads to nothing but destruction. But the narrow way, it's the narrow way that leads to everlasting life and we don't have to go the way that everybody else is going we don't have to take the broad way thinking we can do it all in our own strength we don't have to go the broad way trying to do it all on our own but we can take the narrow way we can take the way in which his yoke is easy we can take the way in which his burden is light and we could wake up tomorrow with a skip in our step, with a smile on our face, with a shine on our face, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And there is joy found in salvation given by Jesus Christ from love of the Father. Hallelujah. He is worthy. And He alone is worthy to receive honor. He is worthy to receive glory. He is worthy to receive worship. He is worthy to receive praise. He is worthy of it all. He's created everything we could see, think, feel, hear, touch, taste, See, no eye has even seen, no ear has even heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And it's because he loves us first, we love him with all of our soul, with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, with all of our strength, by the grace and love of God, we're able to serve Him out of a pure heart. And He will remove ungodly motives. He will remove ungodliness. He will remove that stony heart that person that we used to be, those behaviors that we used to exhibit before we became new creations in Christ, He will completely wash us, transform us, mold us, and um, break us down, reconstruct us, and put us back together the way that He originally intended. And He will cause all things, 
yes, all things to work together for the good, for those who love God and live according to His purpose. It's all working for our good, even if it doesn't appear that way. In fact, it may appear that everything seems to be falling completely apart right now. This is a good sign. This is a very good sign because if it always looks like it's completely all together, I'd be concerned. <laughs> I'd be concerned if the enemy is completely leaving us alone. <laughs> so when there's a little bit of turmoil, when there's a little bit of stirring in the pot, when there's a little bit of shakiness, uneasiness, the foundation which is built on the rock of Christ will be the same foundation that shall stand when the storm hits, when the winds start winding up when the waves start roaring and raging of the sea to beat upon that house the house which will stand has been rooted and grounded in love of god given by the amazing grace of the father that's our foundation upon this rock he shall build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So he's not saying right there that the gates of hell will not attempt to prevail against it. But it shall not succeed. For when the enemy comes in like a flood, God raises up a standard against it on your behalf, on my behalf. When we're going to see the judge in the earthly realm, let's just say. We've fallen short. We've broken the law. We've gotten arrested. We are going to see the judge for determination of our conviction. Would we deny an advocate then? I don't think so. If we are about to serve a life sentence in prison because we broke the law, we've fallen short. Our life being on the line between freedom and prison, enslavement. Would we want an advocate then? I believe we would to go before us and advocate to the judge for us on our behalf. But why? Why? In a spiritual perspective are some denying the one mediator, the only advocate from the spiritual perspective. It's much worse to go through the spiritual justice system without having an advocate than the earthly one. Because in the spiritual justice system exists an eternal lake of fire. In the spiritual justice system also exists the heavens. And Jesus Christ is our advocate for where we've fallen short. Jesus Christ is our advocate who is advocating for us. Between Him and the Father, there is conversation in heaven going on. So will you choose this day whom you shall serve? My question, my question is, who are we serving? What are we serving? If it's not God, if it's not Jesus Christ, it's not of God. If it's not of God, it's of the enemy. Who is the enemy? It's Satan. It's clear as day, black or white. Heaven or lake of fire? 
We don't have to go there because Jesus paid the price. And when he paid the price on the cross, he paid it not halfway, but he paid the price in full that it's by grace through faith in Jesus Christ that we are saved. So if you feel unsteady, if you feel insecure, if you feel you don't know Jesus and want to, if you feel you want a personal relationship with Christ Jesus, if you feel you want a greater, deeper intimacy with God, feel free to pray this along with me. I'll only as the Holy Spirit would lead only as the Holy Spirit would lead but getting to the end of this topics discussion it's the love of God that saves us from that type of wrath we don't have to go there because we have an advocate we don't have to go there because we have a mediator. And there's only one. There's only one. And there is a broad way. The way that the Antichrist is hovering on this land. Whispering lies into people's ears. Telling them that there are many different ways. Many different pathways leading them down a road of destruction. But we don't have to go there as the chosen of God, as the elect of the Most High God. I plead with you as the Spirit leads to choose Jesus. And that's the message because He loves you. He doesn't want any to perish but all to come to repentance. And that whole process is by grace through faith in what he's done. And what he's done, he did it in pure love. Resisting even to the point of the shedding of blood, he resisted sin, that we may be healed that we may be seen righteous in the eyes of the Father, that that righteousness is not in ourselves, but it's of God through faith in God's Son, Jesus. And that is the picture of pure and perfect love. It's extended towards you this night. It's extended towards all of us. He loves us. So... If you feel led, feel free to pray along with me. If you don't feel led, you don't have to. We all have free will. We all have a choice. But under the conviction of the Holy Spirit, I'm just here to preach the good news that we don't have to go there. That he's calling us out, setting us apart because he loves us because he loves us and we can choose him this day so we're going to continue with a prayer hallelujah Jesus we thank you Lord just say with me Lord Jesus I confess right now that I am a sinner I confess I am a sinner in need of a savior. I believe that you were crucified, that you died, you, buried, you were buried, and you were crucified. I believe that you resurrected on the third day. I am humbly confessing in complete humility that I am a sinner in need of a savior Jesus I receive your forgiveness I make you my Lord Jesus I make you my Savior Jesus I believe you are the Christ Jesus I believe you are the Messiah Jesus 
I believe you are the anointed one, the son of God. I thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. I open my heart right now and I pray, Lord, that you would come into my heart, Jesus, baptizing me right here and right now with the Holy Spirit, with power from heaven. Supernatural strength to carry out your will. I pray that you would lead me and guide me all the days of my life, even on to eternity, that you would use me for a testimony to my family and my friends. Save them as well. All for your glory. And we come against every demonic spirit of infirmity, mental sickness, and disease. Worry, depression, anguish, misery, anxiety, fear, go now. Witchcraft, be broken and go now. Confusion, be broken and go now. Deaf and dumb spirit, be broken and go now. Jezebel controlling spirits, be broken and go now. Leviathan pride spirits, be broken and go now. Come out of us in Jesus' name right now never to return again come out of our friends and family you are banished back to the pit in which you came and that's where you remain we are free we are healed we are strengthened and we are whole in the name of Jesus Christ love of God Shine down on us. Love of God, make yourself manifest to us. Jesus, reveal yourself to us in a powerful way. Sound of the abundance of revival rain become more of a reality to our spiritual ears right now. Give us the heartbeat of the Father through the grace and love of God. Help us have a passion to save souls, Lord. Use us for your glory and birth gifts within us. Lead us to our destiny, the plans and purpose which you have already planned for our lives. Send godly connections into our lives and sever every unholy union, every ungodly soul tie from our lives. And anyone in our lives who doesn't belong, we pray you supernaturally remove them now. In Jesus' name we yield our hearts, minds, souls, will, emotions, subconscious and unconscious minds and intellect over to you father god have your way in us in completion with our participation of faith let the fire of the holy ghost burn away everything not sent by father god right now and on and on and on it goes as you lead us to eternity. Save many. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And we plead the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, over our doorposts, our homes, our cars, our bikes, the soles of our feet, 
everywhere we tread upon, over our friends and families, place of work, place of worship, over all that we are and all that we do and everywhere we're going, we plead the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which came by grace, through faith, we put our hope and trust in the love of God tonight. And we receive in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. He is good. He is good. He is awesome. What a mighty God we serve. So I encourage myself and all of us to continue on in this walk in the narrow way and just not let anything discourage, not let anything um, move us out of place. He is faithful and, and he's having his way and he will be there to pick us up in time of need. Comforter, just be with us all tonight. Holy Spirit Comforter. He's good. And that's really all I got. <laughs> that's all he's got. <laughs> Thank you. Jeremy, VJ, Rose, everybody, Devin, Elise, Joshua John, Lauren Dunn, Barry, Gerard, James Amend, Nassim, Nasir, Abram Mims, I welcome you with the love of God. Tom Stretch, Scott Burt, Finkel, McBottom, Serge Eugene, and everyone else. Thank you. Sandy McFarlane, Jason Legala, Aaron Tyler, Sandy McFarlane. I welcome you. I thank you all for your time in fellowship, for your time in prayer, and the Word of God. So, all I can speak is what he would have. So I believe that's what he had for tonight. So be blessed super abundantly and uh, strengthened in the love and grace of God. And until the next time, I will pray and continue praying for all of you and I hope that you would please pray for me and let the joy of the Lord remain our strength. Amen and amen. God bless you.